You might think that it might be called French window, this work, but because it's Marcel Duchamp, it's actually called, are you ready for this? Fresh Widow. The name that he adopted, he suddenly decided to have an alter ego, and he would call her Rose C'est la Vie. I think you can get the pun on C'est la Vie. I'm not a natural Duchamp lover. But, you know, this is one of his more poetic pieces. I mean, I'm quite, it, it's quite interesting, because 1920 is significant, it's just after the First World War, and there were a lot of fresh widows around. And that can be taken in both ways, of course. You know, fresh as in newly, newly made widows, and also fresh feeling like, well, two years has gone by, I could do with a bit of a Roger in now. You know, and the fact that the window has got black leather over it, it tells you, so, you know, black leather, even in 1920, I'm sure that they were, they say, had the same meaning as it does now. You know, a little bit raunchy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And apparently the black leather has to be polished, so it would give the impression of looking through at some kind of night scene beyond. Um, I'm glad that, that Grayson raised the subject of the First World War, because I think that it actually hangs over this piece in a quite a powerful way. I think, it's, I think it's like the aftermath of the First World War. The First World War is still with us, not only in terms of fresh widows, but also in terms of melancholy. I think it's an extraordinarily melancholy piece, this notion of staring through the window and all you can see is darkness, darkness, darkness. It's a bit RLF though, isn't it? Ian McEwen, he has a friend who they always send each other their first drafts and they always write RLF, RLF, which means roaring log fire, which means a bit of a cliche. And the blacked out doorway in many ways is a little, nowadays, I mean, maybe it wasn't in those days. I mean, when I see the French window, I see a, a kind of uh, West End farce. And oh. I imagine Brian Rick sort of stumbling through with his trousers around his ankles, sort of going, oh my God, the wife's coming, quick. Because that's what I see when I see a French window. And, and, and so, you know, you, when you're an artist, you've got to be prepared for other interpretations of your work. I mean, I, you know, people have all sorts of ideas about my work. And the paradox of that, Grayson, is that you can't stumble through this because it's got the vitrine round it, it's mounted on a plinth, and it's in a museum. Yes, and that is something that Duchamp, you know, is responsible for about this whole kind of transformative power. I and mean, here we are now in the white temple of contemporary art. White cube. Yes, indeed. And, you know, Duchamp was the fellow that said, oh, in the future, artists are just going to be people who point at things and decide that they're art. He could paint very beautifully, very skillfully indeed. I mean, New Descending a Staircase is the most extraordinary act of painting. That's part of the shock of Duchamp, that he was able to do that in New Descending the Staircase and then actually to just wander down the road in New York and buy a urinal and say, this is art. And this isn't even the original. This is a 1964 <laughs> version of it, because he was hard up, and he thought, oh, I'll cash in on my fame now. Now I'm changing, revolutionising the generation that are around now. And, uh, and uh, so he, he knocked up another, I think this is number five of eight. And he, and, he, and he churned out quite a few. I mean, so in many ways, he set, he was a pre set the precedent for this whole kind of ring you up, see you at the private view style of being an artist. You know, he rings up the fabrication. Oh yeah, do it in blue, but twice as big. Thanks, see you at the opening, bye. 